In our last lesson, we looked at what photosynthesis is, understood how leaves are adapted for it, as well as looking at factors that affect it. In this lesson, we'll be looking at the sources and function of different nutrients, the structure and function of the human alimentary canal, as well as the role of different digestive enzymes. Please remember to like, subscribe and post your questions in the comments box below. These are the specification points we will be covering. In today's lesson, we want to identify the sources and describe the functions of carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, vitamin A, C and D, the mineral ions calcium and iron, water and dietary fiber as components of the diet, be able to describe the structure and function of the human alimentary canal and be able to understand the role of the digestive enzymes. As a starter, write the word equation for photosynthesis. Describe the role of the palisade mesophyll layer and explain the relationship between light intensity and the rate of photosynthesis. You can pause the video while you think. For question one, carbon dioxide plus water goes to glucose and oxygen. For question two, the palisade mesophyll layer is packed with many chloroplasts to allow photosynthesis to occur. They are arranged closely together so that a lot of light energy can be absorbed. For question three, when the light intensity increases, so does the rate of photosynthesis. If there's no light, then photosynthesis will stop. At nighttime, plants will not carry out photosynthesis and instead they will only respire. A balanced diet should include appropriate proportions of carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, vitamins, minerals, water, and dietary fiber. When we do not have a balanced diet, this can lead to malnutrition. When there's a lack of nutrients, this can lead to starvation, or when there's too much nutrient consumption, this can cause obesity. Carbohydrates found in rice, pasta, and potatoes provide a source of energy. Proteins in meat, fish, nuts and beans are important for growth and repair. A lack of protein can lead to diseases like kwashiorkor. Lipids found in butter, milk, eggs, olive oil or sunflower oil are an important store of energy. Vitamin A found in carrots, liver and butter are important for vision, healthy skin and strong immunity against infection. A lack of vitamin A can lead to a disease called night blindness which makes it difficult to see in low light. Vitamin C found in citrus fruit and broccoli help heal wounds and maintain healthy connective tissues. When we talk about connective tissue, we refer to ligaments, cartilage, and tendons. A lack of vitamin C can cause a disease called scurvy, which causes painful joints and bleeding gums. It was a common disease amongst sailors. Vitamin D, found in eggs, oily fish, or humans can make vitamin D when our skin is exposed to sunlight. This helps maintain healthy bones and teeth. A lack of vitamin D can cause a disease called rickets, which is when the bones weaken and don't form properly. Calcium, found in milk, eggs, and cheese, maintain healthy bones and teeth and allow normal blood clotting. It can also control muscle contractions. Iron, found in red meat, beans, nuts, and the liver, are an important part of hemoglobin, found in red blood cells. A lack of iron can cause a disease called anemia, which causes tiredness and a shortness of breath. Water, found in many of our food and drink, helps regulate temperature and is important for transport. Finally, fiber found in fruit, vegetables, and cereals provides bulk which helps the walls of the intestine move food and feces along the gut. <laughs> Carbohydrates are the body's main source of energy. Different foods will contain different amounts of energy which we measure in kilojoules. When we respire, we are able to release energy which is transferred to allow us to grow, move, think or keep warm. The energy that we need is affected by age, activity levels and pregnancy. As you grow older, the energy you need increases as you reach adulthood. A pregnant woman needs more energy as she is carrying more mass. The more mass a person is carrying, the higher the energy content. Sedentary people need less energy than those people who are very, very active. For example, an office worker might need 10,000 kilojoules of energy per day, but a manual worker might need 15 kilojoules per day. That's because a manual worker is going to be moving around than someone who's sitting down for the whole day. <laughs> Digestion is the chemical and mechanical breakdown of food. It converts large, insoluble molecules 
into smaller soluble molecules, which can be absorbed into the blood. The alimentary canal, or the gut, is the digestive tract which runs from the mouth to the anus. This diagram shows the different parts you'll be required to remember for your exams. The mouth is where food enters the alimentary canal. It is involved in the mechanical digestion of food, which we can see through chewing. It is here where saliva containing the enzyme amylase is added, and that begins to break down carbohydrates. The esophagus is a muscular tube which moves food to the stomach. Movement along the alimentary canal happens by muscular contractions called peristalsis. Here you can see how contraction and relaxation of muscles in the esophagus allow for food to be moved towards the stomach. The stomach is a muscular organ which churns food, breaking it down. The stomach contains hydrochloric acid and enzymes such as pepsin which help digest proteins. Bile is an alkali substance produced by the liver and stored in the gallbladder. Food leaving the stomach is very acidic. However, the enzymes in the small intestine work better in alkali conditions. Bile will therefore neutralize acid as it contains sodium hydrogen carbonate, which is an alkali. Bile will also emulsify fats. Bile turns large fat droplets into smaller droplets, which create a large surface area for the enzyme lipase to break down fats. The pancreas releases digestive juices. This fluid is rich with enzymes that break down fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. From the stomach, food enters into the small intestine. At the duodenum, which is the first section of the small intestine, more enzymes break down carbohydrates, proteins, and fats into smaller molecules. At the ileum, which is the final section of the small intestine, any food still not absorbed is absorbed into the blood. The small intestine is made up of finger-lined structures called villi. These villi are made up of cells called microvilli. Villi are very good at absorption because they have a large surface area, very thin walls, and have a strong network of capillaries that surround them. From the small intestine, food will then pass into the large intestine. In the colon, water is absorbed. The remaining undigested food is referred to as feces. This passes towards the rectum where it is stored before being released via the anus. <laughs> There are five digestive enzymes that you are required to remember. The first one, protease, is made in the stomach and pancreas and breaks down protein into amino acids. Lipase, which is made in the pancreas, breaks down lipids into fatty acids and glycerol. Maltase, made in the small intestine, breaks down maltose into glucose. Salivary amylase, made in the salivary glands, breaks down starch into maltose. And finally, pancreatic amylase made by the pancreas breaks down starch into maltose. Let's look at an exam question. Name the enzyme that digests fats. Tick one box. You can pause the video while you think. The correct answer is lipase. In this next question, describe the role of bile in digestion. You can pause the video while you think. Bile emulsifies fats to give a large surface area for enzyme action. Or you can say it neutralizes stomach acid to give the optimum conditions for lipase to work effectively at. <laughs> By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify sources and describe the function of carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, vitamin A, C, and D, mineral ions, calcium, and iron, water, and dietary fiber as components of a diet. Be able to describe the structure and function of the human alimentary canal and be able to understand the role of digestive enzymes. In our next lesson, we will be looking at the process of respiration. Please remember to like, subscribe, and post any questions in the comments box below.